Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Tuesday, the 13th of September, 2022. And today's theme, the Atlantic keeping us guessing. I had an alternate in mind. I had Kari make this up for me. I thought I was going to use it. You figure it out. But I want to keep things serious. Uh, so we went with this. But I thought I would at least show you the alternate. I don't know. I mean, it is just weird what's going on out there. Different models showing different things every different run. You know, the Western Pacific's busy now. We've got stuff in the East Pack. The Atlantic is just weird and like, what? So anyway, it is keeping us guessing. And the good news in all of this, the bottom line, we don't have to worry about much right now. There's not much happening out there that's going to impact land. So at least that's the upshot to all of this. The rest of it, all of the mechanics on what's going on, Yes, it's definitely keeping us guessing. So let's look and see what we got out there. And I do like to look around the globe because there is some stuff happening. This is our typhoon. Is that Muifa or something like that? Way over in the West Pack. Going to impact China here over the next several days, not far from Shanghai. So that will be a big newsmaker potentially for that part of the world. Uh, this is what it looks like on satellite this afternoon. Big old uh, eye right there heading up towards the eastern portions of China, by the way. There is tai, uh, Taiwan, Shanghai, right about there. Taiwan's down here. I know a little bit of geography. Elsewhere, uh, what else do we have? We got this typhoon, Merbach, or however you pronounce it. Now, look, if this isn't 2022 in a nutshell, I don't know what is. Uh, I guess I should book a plane ticket to Fairbanks. And I don't remember if our we have we have a good friend of the project. His name is Tim Bruno. I think he's back up in Alaska. He does meteorological work. He has launched weather balloons. He worked with the Army. Um, and he helped me last year, or a couple years ago it was, seems like last year sometimes, on um, a Colorado snowstorm. And anyway, he, he loves the cold, uh, at least seemingly. I think he's up in Alaska again, so maybe I should get in touch with him because, really? Like, it shows 948. <laughs> I mean, look, that's not going to happen. It's not going to be a hurricane going into Alaska. We have not completely, this is not the day after tomorrow. Okay, this is not a Roland Emmerich produced, and you movie people will understand that, uh, update. Okay, and so what it is, is showing the leftovers that will still be a very deep cyclone in the atmosphere, but a, a post-tropical or extra-tropical, a lot of energy up there. But hey, might as well, you know, go up to western Alaska and uh, observe what's happening with this. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Um, it's just too remote and like whatever. But it is certainly fitting right into what else is going on in 2022, isn't it? Meanwhile, all sorts of other stuff. But let's look at our uh, Invest 96L real quick. This is in the Atlantic. We'll look at this more in just a moment as well. Most of the model guidance that does anything with it brings it into the Northeast Caribbean. So certainly, our friends down here need to keep an eye on this for squally weather, you know, gusty winds, lightning from time to time, and any thunderstorms that there may be, um, and some heavy rain showers. That will be coming in the next few days, and we will address that more as needed, certainly. And then in the eastern Pacific, real quick, we do have a system out there, 94E, kind of discombobulated right now with the guidance because it hasn't formed yet. And by the way, that is a very important takeaway from all of this. Until you have a low-level defined vortex, a low-level center, the models really do have a hard time because they're trying to figure out where is the genesis going to happen. And until that happens, you are going to get some weird outcomes, uh, even with the best guidance out there. So just keep that in mind. But we'll watch this. It has the opportunity to potentially bring more moisture up here to portions of the Baja and the Desert Southwest. The intensity guidance on it. Fairly robust overall, um, you know, some of it making it a hurricane, otherwise a strong tropical storm, but certainly a lot of moisture that could be headed for the Baja and, as I said, potentially the desert southwest. Hurricane Center, so this is interesting. The overnight run of the Euro especially, I think, helped to prompt this and the appearance on satellite, uh, 96L, and we'll get into that in more detail here in a moment, but it looked like it was going to, Maybe try to do something now, as I said with the title. Uh, we're just guessing. You know, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not so sure anymore. 
uh, who is, right? And then another system out here to the east with a low chance of development as well in the eastern Pacific. There's 94E well on its way eventually to consolidating there. Another little interesting piece of energy off to the west here that's going to kind of get all tangled up with this. And then the whole thing bundles and then eventually it might head up into the vicinity of the Baja and it might bring more moisture for the southwest where it has been wet. And that's a good thing, even with the disruptions and the flooding, you need the water, so there's that. All right, so the GOES uh, server system, evidently, for like tropical tidbits and weather nerds and maybe some other sites, something wasn't working today, and so we're using this animation, and I forgot this was out there, uh, beautiful satellite animation here of a good deal of the western hemisphere, it got the deep tropics there. So what's happening out there? Well, here's our 96L, uh, just some deep, deep, not very, limited is what I meant to say, deep thunderstorms, uh, a big fetch of moisture coming up into this uh, mid-latitude cyclone, and then there's our messy area here in the eastern Pacific. So um, I like this. I'm going to have to bookmark that particular animation because it's awesome. It's like Almost like what it would look like if you're sitting out there at 22,500 miles above the Earth. By the way, you know what all that is? That's smoke from the wildfires that are still going on out here and elsewhere. Yuck. All right, so the vorticity signature, if you peel away the clouds and look below them at the structure, well, there is some decent low-level vorticity with 96L. That's the leftovers of Earl. Oh, by the way, let's at least go back and see what that looks like over here. There it is, way up there in the northern latitudes, still spinning around, disrupting and churning up the ocean up there. I'll show you that more in a moment. It's definitely had an influence. So there's 96. We'll put a big 96 on it. Here's the leftovers of Earl, so we'll throw an E there. This is just a tropical disturbance that we will watch, and here's our mishmash of energy that will eventually go on to become Lester, more than likely, in the eastern Pacific. So, last night... Who stayed up for the Euro? A, a show of hands out there. You did, and you did over. The, I did. Um, I was on the phone with one of our colleagues. And we were talking about it, and uh, you know, just kind of analyzing things and seeing what was happening. And it was getting to be pretty aggressive. I'll show you. This is last night's Euro. That's the zero Z right there. That's when this was from. And we go out every 24 hours. It was like, hey, look at that. Within 48, it really started to ramp it up fairly decently. Brought it through the islands. I was thinking, oh, Brent, you better get ready. Brent's up in Manhattan. He's getting ready to fly back tomorrow. He was in Baja recently. In fact, Brent has seen more tropical action than I have, and he was over in the Baja by accident for a wedding. Again, 2022, just trolling everybody. Uh, and then it moved it over Puerto Rico by day five, and then days six and seven, it looked like it might be a player, right? Something we have to deal with. Other models were aggressive as well. Some weren't so much like the GFS, which never was with this system. That, with the satellite appearance overnight, prompted the Hurricane Center to go with that um, medium probability of development. Then the sun came up, the 6Z guidance came out, and then the 12Z guidance came out. And so let's just fast forward to that, and I'll show you. Let's go backwards so we get everything right here, maybe. Come on. Uh, one day I'll figure this out 100%. So uh, let's go to 12Z today, and let's get rid of that little arrow that's there. There we go. Uh, and the initial conditions, there we are. So pretty good initial set. But now run this out forward, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, sorry. Uh, not so much. You know, it runs the energy into the Antilles there, and uh, by day seven, there's not much going on down here with it at all which is exactly what the GFS was showing pretty much all along. This is last night's GFS, and you can see that right there. It, it, you're like, where? See what? That's it right there. Nothing. There's not much there. And that's pretty much what it looks like is going to happen. The Euro just been way too aggressive with these main development region systems. And I want to make sure I point that out. It is important. All season long, the ECMWF has been too aggressive. Even the ensemble, the EPS, Bonnie, was way too aggressive early on. Looked like a big, long track storm, maybe a hurricane in the main development region. When did it develop? Very close to Central America. 
Most of the development happened in the Eastern Pacific. Earl, the Euro and its ensembles were much too aggressive with Earl early on. Um, not saying the GFS is perfect by any means. This is not rival sports teams. My team's better than yours. The GFS has its problems. It likes to develop these spurious areas of energy down here. And I talked about this a little bit yesterday. It sends them up to all sorts of places in the long range. It's got these biases, but it's absolutely true. You go back and look, and you know I could probably find tweets about it and just have a compilation to show you, especially from people like Andy Hazelton, who keeps up with this kind of stuff, and prove to you, yeah, the, the Euro has been pretty aggressive. We've seen these big ensemble predictions. Oh, here it comes. The Euro is all over it. A few days later, hardly anything. So there's something going on. It's like the European uh, system there. The, the ECMWF didn't get the memo that the Atlantic is struggling mightily this year. So the end result, if we look at the GFS, that's 0Z uh, from last night, not much. And the same thing from today. Run it out to, to 12Z today, and there's just not much down there. There's the energy right there. It comes into the islands over here, as I'll show you. And there's just not much that comes of it. And it's because, and we can look at that in just a moment, let's take this to day five. That makes the most sense. We go look at the upper dynamics. Let's look at the shear. And yeah, that's just not happening. Look at that. Just westerly. It's like a dagger right into that region. 40, 50 knots of westerly shear going at that system as it comes in there. Forget it. Not happening at least if the model is correct. And since the GFS has been pretty consistent at showing this, I would tend to go that route at least for the next five days. All right? All right. So I wanted to show you this because I was thinking that Danielle and Earl would have an influence on these ridiculous high latitude sea surface temperatures. Keep your eye on that. In fact, we'll get rid of me, so you don't focus on me. Watch that. That was two days ago. Remember, this product is always a day behind. Fast forward to yesterday, absolutely, definitely some of that heat been taken out of the far northern Atlantic there. Those anomalies not nearly as strong. That is mainly Earl up there, that big system starting to erode some of those crazy anomalies. Will it be enough to change the balance so that down here becomes more unstable? I don't know. I mean, and that's fine. In science, it is so okay to say, I don't know. I just don't know. We'll see about that. We do know, you know, it's also, well, what do you know? We do know we have anomalously warm temperatures in the main development region. The Northeast Atlantic is also anomalously warm, which is typically associated with a very busy hurricane season. We've got the La Nina out here that has done nothing but strengthen over the last several weeks. Um, but it's the stability, the inability of the deep tropics to maintain and even develop, to even maintain later, deep convection. The lack of instability has been a big issue, and it's probably because of this. A lot of rising motion here, creating all sorts of weird things. Uh, we call it anticyclonic wave breaking, which introduces these potential vorticity streamers all fancy ways of saying dry air has worked its way with these tuts, these tropical upper tropospheric troughs infiltrated into the deep tropics down here at the mid-levels. And then the upper levels have been unfavorable for shear, very much like we would see in an El Nino, even though we are not in an El Nino. But what I don't understand, to be perfectly frank, it's also ridiculously warm in the northwestern Pacific, exactly off the coast here of that area, mirroring what we have for North America. So why are we getting typhoons over here, but nothing in the Atlantic? It keeps us guessing. I don't know. It's just bizarre, because wouldn't that have the same impact as that, you know, these two different basins? So anyway, lots of questions. Uh, for the 2022 season. Again, the bottom line though, nothing expected to be directly impacting land, even though we do need to watch 96L, see what happens after uh, five to seven days. And certainly in that time frame, again, it moves through the islands there. The Northeast Caribbean could have some squally weather. We'll keep an eye on that as it evolves. But 
I am not too concerned about it. I was a little intrigued, certainly after the Euro last night, but I've been burned too many times this year to even give the ECMWF and its ensembles much credence. Um, I think it's just going to come down to, we'll just look at a satellite picture. How's it doing today? And then maybe think, all right, we'll check again in 12 hours and see if it's still there. We're almost at that point. All right? All right, that's it from me. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. As always, thanks for giving me a piece of your day. I appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. If not, we'll keep at it tomorrow. All right? All right, that's it from me. Again, I'm Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning with the What's Up in the Tropics segment.